Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the topic testing of functional textiles. So, the course is testing of functional and technical textiles. In first part, we are discussing the different aspects of testing of functional textiles. In this segment, first we have discussed low stress mechanical characteristics. After that, we have started the transmission characteristics. In transmission characteristics, we have already discussed the transmission of air, transmission of moisture in the form of liquid and in the form of vapor. We have discussed various test methods to evaluate all these characteristics. So, after air transmission and moisture transmission, now we will discuss the method of measurement of thermal transmission. So, there are different methods available. So, before going to the measurement techniques, we will discuss basic aspects of measurement. So, measurement of thermal characteristics we will discuss in two conditions, one is in normal condition where we will discuss the thermal transmission measurement for normal clothing considering the temperature is in normal condition and skin temperature is around 35 degree Celsius. In addition to the normal condition, we have another condition which is extreme condition like extreme cold condition and extreme heat condition may be in flame or radiant heat. So, the measurement techniques for extreme condition are entirely different from that of normal condition. We have different measurement techniques. So, we will discuss all this one by one. So, before going to the measurement techniques, first let us discuss the thermal transmission parameters. There are various thermal transmission parameters. Before we understand the testing methods, we must understand all these parameters clearly, then we can interpret the data. So, the thermal resistance is the basic parameter which we must understand. Okay. The thermal resistance of textile material is measured in SI unit in terms of degree Kelvin square meter by watt. So, what is this? So, it is basically it is defined as the ratio of the temperature difference between two phases of fabric in degree Kelvin to the rate of heat transmission in watt per square meter. That means, degree Kelvin divided by watt per square meter, it is coming as degree Kelvin square meter by watt. So, the reciprocal of heat flux is the 
thermal resistance and heat flux is measured with the unit of watt per square meter per degree Kelvin. So, the ratio of the temperature difference between two phases and the rate of heat transfer per unit area is basically it is the thermal resistance. Now, a practical unit is also there. So, practical unit of thermal resistance which is widely used it is a TOG which is one tenth of the SI unit. So, one TOG is equal to 1 by 10 square meter degree Kelvin per watt. So, the TOG is simply one tenth of the SI unit. Another practical unit which is very widely used specifically for cold climate clothing which is known as CLO. So, this is actually approximately equal to 1.55 TOG. So, we will see how we can reach to this conclusion this relationship with some basic assumptions. So, there are various parameters used to express the heat exchange between human body and its environment through clothing. So, these parameters are mate, clothe, tog. So, we must understand all this parameter very clearly then we can use this parameter this units for different application. First we will di discuss the mate. Basically mate is nothing to do with the clothing insulation. Mate is actually it is a metabolic heat. It is derived from metabolism. So, mate is used to quantify the metabolism of a man resting in a sitting position under condition of thermal comfort. Okay. Now, if we see this table here in the first column it is showing different activity level and in the second column it is a metabolic heat generation it is giving in watt per square meter. Now, as per the definition of mate where it is mentioned that the man is resting in a sitting position. So, we can use the value of seated quietly which is around 55 to 65 watt per square meter and we can take the value 58.2 that means, so 1 mate is equal to 50 kilo calorie per square meter per hour or it is coming out to be 58.2 watt per square meter. So, when it is 55 to 65, so we can take 58.2 that means, 1 mate is equal to 50 kilo calorie per square meter per hour. So, that is one mate that means, a person when he is sitting quietly. So, he is generating a heat which is 50 kilo calorie per square meter hour and that is he is generating one mate. Now, next parameter which is CLO. Now, CLO is directly related with the mate. So, CLO is the measurement of clothing insulation. So, clothing insulation is expressed in terms of CLO. So, how is it related with the mate? Let us see one CLO is defined as the insulation of a clothing system 
that requires to maintain a sitting resting average male comfortable in a normally ventilated room. That means, in sitting a uh, resting condition a male is actually generating one mate. Once he is generating one mate to keep him comfortable the level of insulation which a clothing should actually have that is called one clo and the room condition the ventilated room condition is expressed in terms of 0.1 meter per second air velocity and air temperature is 21 degree Celsius and the relative humidity should be less than 50 percent that is the condition of room. Now, using few assumptions we can derive the relationship now, the assumption is that 24 percent of the metabolic heat is lost through the evaporation process from the skin and respiration. That means, this 24 percent of the metabolic heat is lost where the fabric is not coming into picture. So, 24 percent of 50 kilo calorie per square meter per hour is coming out to be 12. 12 is the heat which is lost through evaporation and respiration and remaining 38 kilo calorie per square meter hour transmitted through the clothing. So, 38 that that much heat is required to be transmitted. The clothing insulation should take care of that much heat 38 kilo calorie per square meter per hour. Now, going further, so remaining 38 kilo calorie per square meter hour should be transmitted through the clothing assembly by conduction, convection and radiation. These are all dry heat, we are not talking about the, the moisture vapor the comfortable mean skin temperature is 33 degree Celsius that is actually taken from the literature. Therefore, the total insulation of clothing that is clothing insulation plus the ambient air layer insulation which is given by I total I T insulation total which is equal to 33 skin temperature minus 21 the ambient temperature that, that is the temperature gradient divided by the heat which has to be actually transmitted through the clothing. So, which is coming out to be 0 0.32 square meter degree Celsius hour per kilo calorie. So, that is the amount of heat which is to be transmitted and this heat is includes the air insulation. This much insulation is actually including the air insulation. Now, let us consider the insulation of air is 0.14 square meter degree Celsius hour per kilo calorie that is the insulation of air. So, insulation of air and insulation of fabric they are in series. So, we can simply subtract from the total insulation. So, we will get the fabric insulation. So, insulation of clothing is 0 0.32 minus 0 0.14 it is coming out to be 0 0.18 which is the insulation of clothing and that is actually the by definition it should be one clo. So, one clo unit is defined as 0.18 square meter degree Celsius hour by kilo calorie or 
if we want to convert into watt, so we must divide by 1.163 it is coming out to be 0.155 square meter degree Celsius per watt okay, which is known as effective insulation. So, effective insulation of clothing is 0.155 and this is the unit of SI unit. Now, we can get the value. So, TOG is also unit of thermal resistance of clothing and is defined as the thermal resistance that is able to maintain a temperature gradient of 0.1 degree Celsius with a heat flux of 1 watt per square meter that is 1 degree temperature gradient the heat flux will be 10 watt per square meter per degree Celsius. So, for 0.1 it is 1 watt per square meter. So, for 1 degree Celsius it will be 10. So, that means the reciprocal of the heat flux is torque. So, 1 torque is equal to 1 by 10 square meter degree Celsius by watt which is SI unit. That means, 1 torque is 1 tenth of the SI unit that 1 clo is 0.155 of SI unit. So, 1 clo will be this is multiplied by 10. So, 1.55 torque. So, that is the relationship 1 clo is equal to 1.55 torque. So, here we can derive the relationship between mate clo and torque. So, we have understood this relationship. Now, we will discuss different measurement technique where we will use all these units for better understanding. So, let us first understand the application of clo value. So, as I have mentioned the clo unit is the clothing insulation which is extensively used for the practical as a practical uh, unit for extreme cold climate clothing or any cold climate cold clothing or even we can use this for heat extreme heat clothing also. Now, the picture shows that this person without any clothing that means, he has the clo value 0. So, as the person is actually putting on the more and more clothing the clo value is increasing that means, the clo value is simply addition. So, he is actually wearing a t shirt and say half pant. So, here if we know the clo value of t shirt and this half pant, so it can simply be added. So, the example here it is given. So, insulation for entire clothing system is the summation of individual component. So, a person who is wearing a half shirt and all these components, if we simply add it will be the total clo. Here the all these things five components are added and we are getting total clo value of this entire system as 0.38. Now, if we talk about this here clo value with this system it is 0.91 it is approximately close to 1 that means, a person who is generating one mate, he will have to wear this type of clothing to keep him comfortable. That means, the heat generation and heat release will be balanced. Now, this is the curve which is known as IREQ that is required 
insulation. So, the calculated required insulation value can be regarded as a cold stress indicator. So, this cold stress index is basically it is nothing but it, it gives us direct indication of the level of cold stress. Now, this let us see this diagram where x axis shows the ambient temperature in this picture it is a starts from minus 40 degree Celsius minus 30 minus 20 minus 10 0 plus 10. So, these are the temperature and I R E Q value that means required flow value of the clothing to maintain to keep the person comfortable here it is given in y axis. What does it show? Suppose a person who is actually at the temperature of minus 20 degree Celsius and he will require different level of flow value depending on his activity. Suppose at minus 20 degree Celsius he is resting, he is resting that means if it is around this zone he needs a clothing with a flow value of 6.5 around 6.5 flow value he will require. But the same person if he is working very hard at that temperature minus 20 degree Celsius, he will require a, clo a clothing with flow value less than 1. That means, at minus 20 degree Celsius, he if he is sitting idle, he is resting, he needs a large quantity of clothing, many layers of clothing, different types of clothing but the same person will require relatively lesser number of clothing layer if he is working very hard. So, depending on the activity level, so if he is gradually becoming active, he will require less insulator insulation in clothing. So, figure shows IRQ value for low physiological strain, low physiological strain means he is relatively in comfortable position. So, IREQ value needed to maintain low level of physiological strain, neutral thermal sensation at varying temperature. So, at different temperature he needs different level of clothing insulation. Suppose, the same person working same level of activities, like suppose he is working very hard, if he is been shifted to another location where temperature is minus 30 degree Celsius. So, to keep him comfortable he will require little bit higher flow. So, accordingly the flow can be adjusted and we can select the clothing accordingly. Now, the calculated required insulation value can be regarded as the cold stress of a person using REQ comprises of three evaluation steps. First, we have to determine the REQ for given exposure condition. So, from using this this graph we can select the REQ value, then comparison of REQ with protection level provided by clothing. So, we know the level of REQ required, then we have to compare this REQ with the clothing REQ value, clothing clo value determination of exposure time if protection level of is of 
lesser value than R e q value. So, that means, if our clothing protection level is less that means, suppose we need the clothes value R e q value 4, but we have a clothing say with the 3.5 clo value. In that case, we have to know the exposure time. So, if the exposure time is less, then we can little bit safely use that, but if the exposure time is very high, very long exposure time, then we should not take any risk. The IREQ indicates a protection level, the higher the value, the greater the risk of body heat imbalance. That means, a person who is at say REQ value 2, he will have lesser threat from cold injury than a person who is at say 6 REQ value. The two levels of strain correspond to a lower level that is neutral condition and higher level slightly cold condition. Here if we see for each and every condition we have two levels one is high level and another is lower level. Suppose some person at minus 30 degree Celsius doing light work his R e q is say 3.5 to 5. So, 3.5 to 5 means if we have a fabric or clothing system with 3.5 clo, he will be actually with a 5 clo, he will be basically comfortable, but if he has 3.5, he will feel little bit cold stress. Now, these are simple guidelines, these are available in published literature. So, we can have different combination. So, we have to simply select the combination and we know the total clo value of all these combinations. So, we know like for example, briefs, short sleeve shirt, fitted trouser, calf length, shock and shoe a person if he is wearing that then his R e q value will be the clo value will be 0 0.5. So, accordingly we can select the combination, we can have different combination. So, few combinations are given here. Now, few other parameters the insulation value of fabric is measured by its thermal resistance and thermal resistance is reciprocal of thermal conductance. What is thermal conductance? Thermal conductance is expressed in terms of watt per degree Kelvin, watt per Kelvin is measured by measuring the total heat transmitted in kilo calorie through fabric per unit time with unit temperature difference. So, that is a thermal conductance and conductivity is due to both the fiber and entrapped air. So, thermal conductivity is mainly through the fiber material and through the air and it is expressed is that thermal conductivity it is lambda the unit is watt per meter per Kelvin can be that is lambda equal to 1 by thermal resistance R multiplied by D by S. Okay. D is the basically thickness and S is the, the unit area. So, the measurement of heat transmission in a particular direction has 
practical difficulty. It is not like a fluid like air or water. Now, let us first see as we have seen earlier that if we want to measure the air flow air flow in a particular direction. So, in this direction we want to measure air flow what we have to do? We have to flow the air through a pipe and this air will flow out and we can measure the air flow rate in terms of say liter per say hour and here we can guide the air through this pipe or through any channel so any of any form we can guide the air or any fluid. So, in case of say liquid also we know this channel and we can measure the flow rate. But if any heat we have to transfer say through a fabric we want to measure the heat flow rate through fabric. If we want to measure the air flow rate through fabric, so we can cover this side other side of the pipe for the tube with the fabric and we can measure the flow rate. Similarly, for liquid also we can measure the liquid flow and we can just cover this other side of fabric and we can measure the flow rate through the fabric. But the heat the problem of heat transmission is that heat we cannot have the flow in the one direction it cannot flow in unidirectionally if a heater if it is the source it is a heater the heat will always try to flow in all the directions. So, if we want to measure the heat transmission only through the fabric it is very difficult because the whatever heat it is actually generating it is a portion of the heat is transmitting through the fabric, but rest heat are in other directions. So, it is very difficult to quantify this amount of heat which is through fabric. So, we have to use some alternate arrangement it is some indirect arrangement to, to measure the heat transmission through fabric. So, typically two approaches are being used the approach one is that comparison of unknown sample characteristics with standard sample. So, if we can compare the thermal resistance of unknown sample that is our fabric with standard sample in that case we can measure the thermal resistance of a particular fabric. Now, here suppose we have we want to compare the unknown sample with a known sample. So, this is one known sample say plate standard plate with known thermal insulation value thermal resistance value is known another unknown sample which is placed in parallel it is in in series we are placing just above the known plate this is fabric which is unknown sample and here if we want to measure the 
thermal insulation of this fabric in that case we have to measure the temperature here temperature at junction point T 1, T 2 and T 3. So, the temperature difference between the surface and the ratio of thermal insulation thermal resistance this ratio is constant when the materials are in series that means R by say T 1 minus T 2 equal to R of standard R of fabric. So, R f will be say T 2 minus T 3 where T 1 is more than T 2 is more than T 3 because this is the heat source heat is flowing through this. So, using this R standard so using this simple basic equation we can calculate indirectly the thermal resistance of a fabric. So, this technique is used in tog meter this principle is used in tog meter. Another way of measurement is that to reduce the heat loss in other direction. So, if we can somehow direct the heat towards one direction and blocking the heat in all other direction. So, that we can channelize the heat only through the specimen and we can measure the thermal transmission directly. So, fabric thermal conductivity as we have already discussed it is expressed by this formula. Now, first we will discuss the principle of tog meter. So, tog meter we have two types of tog meter which one is the double plate tog meter, two plate tog meter another is single plate tog meter. So, standard and test samples have to be placed in series as I have mentioned the internal resistance of test fabric is calculated by comparing the temperature drop across the test fabric and the standard fabric that is standard may be fabric or in this case we can use the standard plate. So, two types of tog meters are there two plate tog meter and single plate tog meter. Now, this is the schematic diagram of two plate tog meter there is a bottom plate which is heated by the heat flow just above the bottom plate we can place the fabric specimen and another plate that is top plate is used which is lower mass lighter in mass which is used in just above the fabric the mass should be lower otherwise it will compress the fabric specimen and the insulation characteristics of the fabric will change. So, as I have mentioned the ratio of the insulation and temperature difference they remain same and that is the ratio of say insulation of fabric R fabric divided by the temperature difference between the two surfaces of fabric that is the T 2 minus T 3 which is equal to R standard by T 1 minus T 2. T 1 is the bottom side temperature and T 2 is the top side temperature of the standard plate. The sample is placed between 
heated lower plate and insulated upper plate. The upper plate should be of low mass so that fabric should not get compressed. The temperatures T1, T2 and T3 are measured. So, T1 is a temperature measured at the heater, T2 is a temperature between standard plate and fabric and T3 between test plate, test fabric and upper plate. The heater is adjusted so that the temperature of the upper face of the standard place T2 is exactly same as the skin temperature which is around 35 degree Celsius. So, after the two plate now we will discuss the single plate togmeter principle. In single plate we simply use one standard plate here top plate is not used. So, the temperature at the heater that is at the bottom of the standard plate T 1 and the temperature between the standard plate and fabric T 2 and the temperature T 3 which is the temperature of the air ambient temperature air which is typically above 1 meter of the fabric specimen where the temperature is actually standard. The sample is placed on the heated bottom plate and the top is left uncovered. The air above the specimen has a considerable thermal resistance. So, it is the summation of the insulation of fabric and air. Okay. So, that actually we are we will measure here the temperature T 1, T 2, T 3 as I have already mentioned where T 1, T 2 are same as that of two plate togmeter measurement and T 3 is the temperature of air that is the room temperature a separate experiment is therefore, performed because the insulation which we are getting here it is the insulation of air and the specimen. That is why we need to conduct a separate experiment without the specimen that is called bare plate test to measure the resistance of air which is expressed as R air that means, whatever value we will get with the sample if we actually subtract the R A R value we will get the exact value of the fabric insulation. So, in case of bare plate it can be calculated as uh, follows. So, as we have seen earlier also okay, R air is the thermal resistance of air and R standard is the thermal resistance of standard material. So, the experiment is repeated with the sample placed on the bottom plate and the apparatus is again allowed to reach its equilibrium. The thermal resistance of the sample is actually calculated by subtracting R air value. So, these are the two methods which are actually used for measuring the insulation of fabric in actually comparing by knowing the standard plates resistance. Next is the guarded hot plate. The guarded hot plate principle it works with the principle where we try to control the direction of heat flow in a particular direction where it only goes through the 
fabric specimen. The ther thermal transmission is measured here the parameter which is called thermal transmittance of fabric. Thermal transmittance is reciprocal of thermal resistance. In this apparatus a test plate which is surrounded by guard plate at four sides. Okay. Now, let us see suppose this is test plate. Okay. Test plate. Now, we have to heat this is a heater heater 1. So, the heater 1 is heating the test plate and suppose we are placing the fabric specimen on this. This is the fabric specimen and what we want? We want to measure the heat which is flowing through the fabric and the heater 1 is heating the test place but this heat is transmitting through other direction also. So, it is very difficult to know how much heat is getting transmitted through the fabric. So, the guard plate guarded hot plate principle where we would like to direct the heat in to pass through a particular direction. Here the heat which is flowing in other direction say in sideway direction we can block the heat by providing some insulation some cork insulation we can provide. And this plate if we see from the top side this is the plate so, test plate okay test plate and the insulation is provided at four sides these are the insulation so which actually prevent the heat flow in sideway but this insulation may not be sufficient the heat will still try to flow in sideway direction. So, for that we will provide another square guard ring. So, we can provide this is the guard ring is provided. So, guard ring is heated with another heater which is H 2 and this heater is providing the heat to the guard ring to maintain the same temperature. Suppose, this is the temperature 35 degree Celsius here also exactly 35 degree Celsius temperature we are maintaining. So, this heater temperature plate temperature 35 degree Celsius guard ring temperature is 35 degree Celsius. That means, there is no temperature gradient so, heat will not try to flow from the test plate to the guard ring. So, this side the sideway flow of heat is being blocked using two technique one is the cork insulating cork another is maintaining the same temperature of guard ring. So, we have blocked the sideway transmission then another side which is a creating problem here it heat can flow in bottom sides also. So, here what we do we provide another plate which is called bottom plate and which is again heated with another heater H 3 to maintain the temperature again 
35 degrees Celsius, same temperature. That means, if we have no temperature gradient, so that heat will not flow in this direction also bottom direction. So, we have blocked heat flow side way as well as the bottom way, only one direction the heat can flow that is the top direction and in the top direction we have placed the fabric on the test plate and that is how we can measure directly the heat which is flowing through the fabric and this heat is provided by heater H 1. That means, in guarded hot plate we measure the heat which is provided by H 1 that is which is heating the only the test plate and bottom plate and guard ring the heat which we normally do not take into account this heat are required to maintain the same temperature. Okay. So, the test apparatus here the test plate surrounded by guard plate at four sides below it it is surrounded by lower guard plate that is bottom plate a constant temperature around 33 to 36 degree Celsius. So, same temperature is maintained the testing atmosphere should be maintained at fixed condition 4.5 to 21 degree Celsius that is uh, recommended we can use other temperatures also for different experimentation and the relative humidity at different range. So, the method is that the specimen is placed on the instrument and is allowed to reach the equilibrium condition. Heat passing through the sample is measured in watt per square meter that is power consumed by the test plate per unit area. So, if we see this picture this is the top view as I have already shown center one is the test plate here these are the insulation and then it is a guard ring and after that another insulation and abo above that we place the test specimen and below there is another plate which is the bottom plate and three different heaters are used for heating and to maintain the same temperature. Let us see the animation here. In first we will see the only the test plate without any guard plate and bottom plate. This is showing top view and it is side view. The plate is there above that we are placing the fabric specimen and then the test plate is connected with heater and once it is heating the heat will flow at different direction, but in other animation if we see this is the test plate and this is a guard plate and insulation and then it is a red one is bottom plate we are placing the fabric specimen and then these plates are connected with heater and once the temperatures are maintained same the heat is only flowing through the fabric specimen that is recorded and which is the thermal transmittance is expressed in terms of u value 
which is the P is the power consumed by the test plate, A is the area of test plate and also the area of fabric and T P minus T A these are the temperature difference. Okay. And we can use the bare plate test to know the constant for the instrument and if we subtract we will get the thermal transmittance of fabric itself. Okay. So, as already explained the thermal transmittance also known as U value is the rate of transfer of heat in watt through 1 square meter of a structure in this case in our case it is a fabric divided by the difference in temperature across the fabric structure. Okay. It is expressed in watt per square meter per Kelvin and Q is the heat transfer in watt is equal to A multiplied by U multiplied by T 1 minus T 2 is the temperature difference. So, U can be measured as Q by A by T 1 minus T 2. Okay. So, if we try to see the actual fabric thermal transmittance, we can compare with the standard metal standard material single glazing like window it is having 5.7 watt per square meter Kelvin. Okay. Now, likewise we can see the oil insulated roof it has got value of transmittance value 0.15 oil insulated wall it has got value 0.25. Okay. So, oil insulated floor 0.2. So, in this way we can get the insulation value. So, 0.15 is the oil insulated roof. Now, if we want to compare the insulation value the insulated roof insulation value with our fabric we will get this value. The thick oven fabric has thermal transmittance value 20 to 80 that is the oven value thin oven value 550 to 200 that is the range we can get and knitted medium weight cotton fabric is having 30 to 100 watt per square meter this is the range we will get. So, we, when we test with the guarded hot bullet. So, thermal transmittance is a combined thermal transmittance of specimen and air which is calculated as U 1 which is P by A multiplied by T P minus T A where T P and T A are the temperature of test plate and temperature of air ambient air that is the temperature difference P is the power loss by test plate A is the area and this is actually combined with the air. Now, we can measure we can measure the thermal transmittance of air okay, which is by bare plate test we can do without any fabric and from there we can calculate the thermal transmittance of fabric itself. So, we have discussed the togmeter principle, we have discussed the guarded hot plate principle and another principle we will just discuss which is KESF thermolab. Okay. In this system it is basically here it evaluates the thermal transmission characteristics of fabric. This is simple technique it measures the ease at which the heat is transmitted from a heated plate with a constant temperature of 30 degree Celsius. So, there are two plates 
one plate is having 30 degree Celsius and another plate it is 20 degree Celsius in between that these two plates there uh, is a fabric specimen this is actually the technique is like that here is a plate plate 1 which is kept at 30 degree Celsius and then we keep fabric specimen here this is a fabric specimen and another plate which is kept say 20 degree Celsius. So, heat will flow from hot plate to relatively cooler plate and it will flow through fabric. The thermal conductivity K that is W the watt per meter Kelvin of fabric can be calculated using simple formula thermal conductivity K is heat flow rate multiplied by distance that is the thickness of fabric then cross section the area of fabric by temperature difference. So, this will give direct value where Q is the quantity of heat flow that from the hot plate to cooler plate T is the time required and L is the fabric thickness. Okay. A is the area of fabric and delta T is the temperature difference. So, using this simple technique the KESF cow water evolution system in thermolab 2 we can measure the thermal conductivity. So, we will stop here. So, we will continue with this discussion in next class till then thank you.